Greetings, my name is Thierry Tichesheckam. I am going to present our work that tackles the problem of scalability of mutation testing by selecting fault revealing mutants. This work was performed in collaboration with Mai Papadakis, Tegawan de Bissiande and Yves Le Trao from the University of Luxembourg and Kushik Sen from the University of California, Berkeley. While software are developed, effective tests are also created in order to evaluate their quality. Then the tests are executed on the program. If the test pass, that's fine. If the test fail, then a fault is found in the software and the software needs to be repaired and tested again until all the tests pass and the software is considered tested. Now, how do we design this effective test? In the literature, there's what's called test adequacy criteria that help to evaluate the test and to generate to create additional tests. An example is statement coverage where we can have a test that we execute on the program and see which statements are executed and which are not. And then we can compute the statement coverage. And if the statement coverage is not enough, we can design new tests in order to cover the statement that were not covered previously. Another test adequacy criterion is called mutation, which inj injects fault in the program based on a defined set of rules called mutation operators. And when the mutation are inserted and the mutants are generated, then these mutants are used to create tests and the tests are executed in order to see how many mutants are killed or how many artificial faults are found. And this can help to drive the testing. And mutation has been known to be a test adequacy criterion that is very effective at finding faults in programs. One problem though is that the number of mutants that are created are often too many. This makes mutation very expensive to apply in practice. To tackle this issue, in the literature, there have been several approaches. One is called random sampling, where mutants are randomly sampled in order to be used uh, for testing. Another approach is selective mutation that uh, choose which mutation operator to apply to generate mutants. And the other one is statement deletion that only apply statement deletion mutation operator. However, all these three approaches have been found to be similar in fault detection or fault revelation. And also, uh, previous study found that uh, by uh, sampling few mutants, the fault uh, revelation loss is very high. So we propose to use to, to uh, use machine learning in order to propose an approach that will select uh, the mutant that we call four revealing mutants. The four revealing mutants are defined as follow. If we have the test that reveal a fault, then the four revealing mutants are mutants that are killed only by the test that reveal the fault. And previous studies show that these represent around 3% of the mutants. We also can relax this definition to have uh, mutants that are mostly killed by tests that find the fault. Let's say in this case, 90% of the tests that, case, that kill the mutant also find the fault. This is called 90% for the revealing mutants. And these also are very few. They are around 4% of the mutant. So if we manage to design a technique that can effectively find this mutant, we can successfully reduce the number of mutants while retaining a high fault revelation. So our approach is called FARM and use supervised machine learning to select for the revealing mutants. To give an overview or a background of uh, supervised machine learning, I will use these slides where you have features for each data element and a label. And during the training, we know the label and we have the features. We can fit this into an algorithm that will train a model. And during uh, evaluation or in practice, we will have a uh, an element that only has features, but we don't know the class level, and we want to predict the class level. Then through the model, we will predict the probability that the item belongs to the positive class. And based on a certain threshold, we can uh, decide whether the uh, element based on the probability is in the positive class or the negative class. So in our approach, we will use this to predict uh, for the revealing mutants. The features that we need are the following. We choose these features uh, in four categories. We have the mutant types, we have the accessing tree based features, the control flow graph based features, and the data dependency and control dependency based features. An example of 
mutant type uh, features can be the actual mutant type, which is what is match, the expression that is match, and the and what is replaced. For example, we can see greater than becomes uh, not equal. That's the mutant type that we use as feature. And for abstract syntax tree, we have like the abstract syntax tree of the parent node of the mutation statement. These features uh, were proposed in literature as well. And we also have control flow graph feature, like the number of basic block that precede the basic block where the mutated statement reside. And we also have data and control dependency, which is like the number of mutant on data dependence nodes on the statement that is mutated and so on. Now, this is uh, the way we apply our approach to select uh, four Vivali mutants. So during the learning phase, we have a corpus of faulty programs where we create mutants. And for each of the mutants, we extract the features, which are static code features. And we also compute uh, the full revelation of the mutants. We use this information to train a machine learning classifier. And during validation, the program on the test can be mutated. And for each mutant, the features are extracted. And through the model, we can compute the probability of the mutant to be full revealing. Then we select the mutants that have the highest probability of being full revealing to be used for testing. The implementation of our approach is based on a gradient boosted decision tree. Within Boosted Decision Tree is an ensemble uh, uh, decision tree where uh, the model is many small uh, decision tree are built and each uh, decision tree uh, is learning to fix the error from the previous decision tree. And then during prediction, the aggregated value of the prediction of each de small decision tree is used to have the final probability of the model. For the evaluation, we use uh, code flows, which is a benchmark of a program that have faults. And we use around 1,629 uh, fault, faulty programs. And uh, this created more than 1 million mutants. And we have one, uh, around 100,000 tests. Um, we use cross-validation in order to uh, evaluate uh, our our machine learning selection, um, then for cross validation. So now for the result, we ask the question, how well does our machine learning method predict for revealing mutants? So here we have the AUC uh, curve, the, the AUC for the rock curve. And we can see here that the AUC value is 0 0.62, which is much higher than 0 0.5. This shows that our machine learning is able to, the feature that we have are able to capture the properties of four revealing mutants. We also use the machine learning uh, algorithm to predict the key label mutant. This is, we only, we just change the label instead of four revealing to whether the mutant can be killed or not. And applying the same uh, uh, training and evaluation, we call this pred killable prediction of killable mutant, and we have an AUC that is much, much higher. This shows that the, this feature that we have indeed captured the properties of mutants. But because the faults are more difficult to predict than a killable mutant, that's why we have a higher AUC for the killable mutants. We then evaluate the practical ability of our approach. For that, we have two scenarios. The first scenario, we ask the question, in what order should the mutant be analyzed for faster for revelation? if we use our approach or we use a random mutant ranking. We have two assumptions. The first one is that the cost to analyze all the mutants is the same. The second one is that the cost to generate tests to kill a mutant is the same as the cost to prove the mutant equivalent. So this is the procedure that we follow. We, pick, we rank the mutants uh, based on each of the techniques that we compare with, and then we pick the next mutant, analyze it, and kill it if it can be killed, and then check if the killing test can find a fault. We then remove the mutants from the list and then continue that until we find the fault. So this is an example that illustrates that. Let's say we have here the matrix for the kill matrix for, for some mutants. The rows are the different mutants and the columns are the test and the dot means that the given mutant is killed by the given test. Now, if we do the simulation, we pick this the, the mutant ordering for, let's say, our technique, 
M1 to M9. Now we pick the next mutant, which is M1, and we pick a test that killed the mutant, let's say T1. Then we see that uh, all the mutants that are killed by that test, which is M4 in this case, is removed from the list. And note that T4 in red is the test that finds the fault in this case. So then the next mutant is selected, which is M2. And then we find a test that kill M2, which is in this case T6. And all the mutants that are also killed by T6 are removed. And we repeat that until we reach to the test that find the fault. And here we can see that the fault was found after analyzing four mutants. So here the cost is four for this approach. Here we present the results for this scenario. This graph represent uh, the, on the x-axis, the percentage of test cases generated, and on the y-axis, the rate of revealed faults. And we have each of the techniques, the curve for each of the techniques. So if we see, for example, uh, when we generate around 45% of the test cases, uh, our approach, which is farm, is able to find all the faults. And we can see that in order to find all the faults with random, we need around 65% of the test case to be generated. So the difference of test case to be generated is 20% between our approach and, and random test generation. And if we now... Now we show the result of, of this scenario start. Here are the results for this particular scenario. This graph shows on the x-axis the percentage of test cases that need to be generated before a fault is found. And on the y-axis, we have the fault revelation, which is like the percentage of faults that are found for, that partic for a particular percentage of test cases generated. And the blue lines is our approach farm and the others are random and the model that uh, predict the killable mutants. And we can observe that when both our, our, of, uh, our approach and the random and predictable approach find all the faults, the percentage of test case to be generated is 20% less with our approach than with the other approaches. This means that we can find all the faults with fewer, with lower, uh, smaller effort. And also, we can see that when our approach find all the faults for that, but for the particular test case, <sighs> now we present the results of the evaluation for scenario one. This graph present on the x-axis the percentage of test cases that are generated, and on the y-axis, the rate of reveal faults. And we have the curve for each of the approach. For a given percentage of test cases generated, what is the proportion of faults that are revealed? The blue lines is our approach farm, and we have a random approach and the predictable, which is prediction of killable mutants. And we can observe that when our approach reach 100% uh, of full revelation, it's around 44% of test cases that need to be generated. But the other approach need around 64% of test cases to be generated in order to reach the 100% uh, the full revelation. And we can see that the difference is around 20%. This shows that using our approach can save up to 20% of test generation effort. On the other hand, we can see that when we find all the fault with our approach, we are around 44% of test cases that need to be generated. And for that same percentage of generated test cases, the other approach found around 87% of the faults. So our approach is better as saving the cost of test generation. Now we want to show the cost of 
the mutant analysis, which is how many mutants need to be analyzed in order to find before finding the faults. And we do some statistical tests to compare uh, our approach found with the other approach. And we can see that in 57% of the cases, our approach find the faults earlier than the random approach. And for predictable, there's no statistical significance difference. And the conclusion that we have here is that our approach farm here is not capturing the equivalent mutants. It's not differentiating properly the equivalent mutants and the full revealing mutants. Because in many cases, the full revealing mutants are not killed by many, many tests. So in order to validate that, we present another variant of farm, this is, which is as follows. So let's say farm rank the mutant as following, M1 to M8. What we do is that we apply predictable to predict the killable mutants. And then we prioritize the, the killable mutants in the ranking. And we call this farm star. So all the killable mutants will be first, and then the non-killable mutants will be put toward the end. And using the farm star ranking, we still have uh, for the test uh, effectiveness is a bit lower than farm, but it's still much better than the other approaches. And for the analysis, the cost of anal the, the analyzed mutant cost reduction, it is much, much better than random and also the page key level. So we can see that using machine learning is indeed possible to improve the ranking of mutants to find the fall faster. Now we go to the second scenario where we want to select the mutants, the subset of mutants that need to be used for testing with minimal loss of false revelation. So here we select the top, let's say, X percent of mutants for each rank list of mutants, and then we evaluate the false revelation for that selected set of mutants. And this is the result that we have in this case. We have farm, farm star, and random and predictable. And we can see that when farm reached to 100% of full revelation, and at that same point, the other approach have very much less fault revelation, which is 32% less fault revelation. And also, when the other approach found reached to the 100% uh, fault revelation, the difference with farm is like 23% of mutants. So in order to reach 100%, for revelation with the other approach, we need to, to analyze 23% more mutants than using farm. So this shows that farm indeed reduced the cost of mutation testing while keeping a, a, a high uh, for revelation compared to the baseline approaches. We also compare with the uh, uh, SDL and E selective for the given sizes, and we see that. Indeed, this confirm again the literature, the result in the literature that there's no difference between the uh, e-selective, SDL, and the random-based approaches, and our approach is better. We also perform additional experiments using CoreBench, a benchmark that has program from CoreUtil and GREP, and the results agree with the previously presented results. So to conclude, there's a problem of large number of mutants that hinder the use of mutation testing in practice. And we tackle this problem using machine learning and propose a set of features that can be used to find the four revealing mutants. And our results show that the ranking of mutants based on the probability obtained from the machine learning leads to the fold faster and provide a high fold revelation while keeping the number of mutants to be used slow. Thank you.